think they can do. It's a rough one, I would say. Like, just looking at the carry-to-carry -carry matchup, it doesn't strike me as a particularly good lifestyle game. He's, I, I would say he's not good against any of these heroes. Playing into Blinding Light, Stone Gaze, Rupture. You're playing into Fates, Edict, the Void Spirit. Very difficult to catch with all his there abilities. So, definitely not going to be an easy game for Crystalis to be able to pop off. Uh, panel was talking about the itemization on Lifestealer. Seems like Crystalis is already set with what, what he wants to go for. Just the face boot armlet and then probably start thinking about his next item. Whether he wants to get like this, so have a little bit more damage. Or if he needs like casual Sanj, maybe turn that into Heaven's Halberd against all of these heroes. Because this type of a lineup from Team Liquid is very heavy, like late game oriented lineup they scale so well you have bloodseeker void spirit medusa trilane uh, tri these three cores are extremely strong in the mid and late game also sure medusa like the hero has been nerfed but it's still a super strong hero going for this late smoke so we'll see if they can get anything done by doing so nisha they get chipped down to about half health but other than that, nothing really doing in terms of kills. They do get themselves three bounty runes to the one of Liquid. Nisha is the one who clicked follow on Boxy, wanted to get that free tango from him immediately. Took Boxy a couple of seconds to realize that he needs to help his teammate. Nisha does not want to... He wants to have, like, full region coming into this lane because he's been heavily harassed. Both of these heroes in the mid lane going to have damage reduction. Not too fun of a lane to... Watch, both these heroes all are also universal heroes right now, so more stats. This is why we see these changes in the builds. Circlet, double, uh, four branches, three branches on Armel. Is this... Uh, well, I mean, Armel played well even, with it potentially being a bad matchup for him in game number one. Is it a similar matchup, or is it more 50-50, you'd say? No, definitely not. I, I was a little worried, maybe too worried for the previous matchup. This time around, Armel should do just fine playing into Void Spirit. And also, this is going to be the hero building a Diffusal Blade, some kind of a mana burn against Medusa. But then again, you have Keeper of Light to replenish some of his mana. And you will also have Void Spirit. I think this is going to be another key hero to play with. Replenish cooldowns on three abilities that Void Spirit uses. One of the better ones. They're dropping fairly low. Puppy already down to 100 HP. Used Blood Grenade as well, which is going to give Zai all the move speed in the world. 400 move speed, minute and 40 minutes into the game. This is where you start pinging the side lane, start using the chat, the your microphone as well, start flaming your teammates. Why is Bloodseeker moving so fast? Lifestealer can't really attack him, and you can see <laughs> the power of the blinding light as well in this bottom matchup. Yeah, it's a big issue, and now ooh, the Remnant grabbing on Armel just for a split second. Insane is getting harassed by Yamich on this Techies, uh, just constantly using that Sticky Bomb to hit this Oracle. But uh, nothing crazy doing in terms of that, and you can see over mid, Nisha and Armel just back and forth for the moment, 11 and 3 for this Void Spirit, and ooh, Yamich gonna get a kill there with the Blast Off. Just to have the damage. Solo killed him. Tidehunter didn't yeah. really do anything. Doesn't get any gold from it. Uh, so this will push him closer to level 3. And then having 2 points and Sticky Bomb. Insania also using Fate's Edict early on. Yamich finds an opportunity. Gets that blast off. Gets that stun and gets the kill. That was uh, just at the edge of that. He, he needed to grab everything he could for it and got it. So he said that lane could start to really favor secret with these extra levels in sticky bomb i want to see tight hunter also getting a point in gush in this lane just to have a little bit more slow a little bit more damage try to set things up maybe force another fates edict and insania we talked about him getting that fates edict on level two an ability that has been buffed in the previous patches because it no longer disarms enemies provides magic resistance only to allies so Really good ability right now. They're not playing this lane to kill anything, so getting purifying, purifying flames. Did it again. They're going to try and jump Insania oh. behind the tower. They got to watch out on this courier as well. Another sticky bomb onto Insania, and I think if Boom can get there, he should have the kill, but he's got to just get through the trees and throw that anchor smash, and Insania's dead back to back. 
not really all too fun at the moment for uh, this Oracle in the top lane. We'll come back to the lane one more time. Medusa's getting some solo XP while all this is happening. Mickey awesome. getting the farm. Mid lane, 20 CS on Pango, 6 denies compared to 17 and 5, just a couple of extra CS. They're on Pango. Nisha will catch up, has a couple of creeps coming closer to his tower. And we should be fine here. Does have Ring of Health. You don't buy Vanguard on Tidehunter because he has one built in with the Kraken shell. Still, extremely difficult hero to kill, as we've seen from most of the offlaners in the current patch. Yeah, Vanguard or Kraken Shell, it just it seems like you could step up and, and hold your ground pretty well, especially as you get later into these games. When you've built up all those auras. Senya and Mickey, at least for Mickey, it's been pretty all right. 22 and 1, like, he's just farming, he's fine. Not exactly the same could be said for an Oracle, but is what it is. I, I, I would say getting a lot for your Medusa is always a nice time. One thing that they have that is not so good for Liquid is like two supports are very defensive, can't really make rotations with these heroes, so you will rely right. on Rupture. Bloodseeker needs to have a good game. Most importantly, Void Spirit. He needs to be the playmaker for his team. And we see already some stacks being made in the triangle by Boxy. He read the patch notes. Good for him. Understands that this is the way to get XP. Easily, 30% of all the XP. Medusa can easily clear it. Big camps can be cleared by Void Spirit. I'm wondering with the changes to stacks like that, are you going to see, like, maybe a Luna come back into the mix a little bit? It's more support-oriented on stacks, right? So it's not really there for the Luna. Bring back support, Luna. Ooh. Make it viable again. Make your stacks, take your stacks. <laughs> Nisha. Ooh, Rolling Thunder is available. Level 6 before Nisha hit it just by a creep or two. And now Yamich. Well, they find Insania again. So this should be a third lining up unless Nisha is able to stop it from going down. But with the Swashbuckle at level 3, the damage is certainly there. And there's nothing they can do. Like you said, the supports can't really do much. Oh, blast off on a Nisha. Now he's got that level 6. The Aether Remnant feeding his life away on that one. And Nisha at least gets a kill out of that. He's going to be happy with it as Zai in the bottom lane is getting chased by Crystalis, but not close enough to get the kill. Zai alone can't really get anything done to Life Stealer. Crystalis will hit him every single time he gets close. As Bracer, a little bit more survivability there. Region, healing Lotus as well. Level 5 on this Life Stealer. Bloodseeker will hit level 6 faster, but they need. Some kind of a stun, something that can't stop him from TPing. Not gonna be an easy one. Going towards bottom. <laughs> See if they can make anything happen. He's about to hit that level six, so they'll have rupture available. Wouldn't be surprised to see now with rupture available, Nisha make a rotation and try and get two kills in this bottom lane if possible. It's so weird to look at Medusa, like her HP, 208 <laughs> hit points, uh, seven minutes into the game. <laughs> that that was like one of those first Reddit posts when this patch came out, when Medusa had starts with like, what, 120 or something like that? Guys, my Medusa's not working. The, it's broken. It has 200 HP. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure this is enough health, guys? Yeah, you're fine. Don't worry about it. It's fine, you have 1,000 mana. Yeah. Survivable, for now. Armel, with that rupture, and there's really not much you can do when you've got that rupture on you. Especially if you're Pango. That used to be the big counter for Weaver when he was very popular. Good raid from Zai there, understanding that bottom can't really be killed, so he rotates to the mid lane instead as a level six Bloodseeker, and looking at his item build, some recovery Midas. Or Mr. Zai is going to be good. Wants to be able to scale. Understand that this game is not going to be easy to make rotations. And something that we did mention. Clearing the big stacks with Void Spirit. Has Arcane Rune. Has Keeper of the Light to lower the cooldowns even more. What is a cooldown? 
They're going to try and go with that blast off to get the kill on Azai, and they'll get it. Yamich actually the one who's getting credit for that kill with three heroes over bottom. They brought Puppy in with the Pugna. And they also have Varn Mel nearby. They were trying to maybe sneak getting these stacks or getting a kill over in the triangle. But it, it, the whole time, it, it really is just leaving Mickey by himself to farm, and he's top of the net worth, which is always a scary thought when you have a Medusa. Or, well, when you're against the Medusa, it's a scary thought. Liquid's damage output at the early stages of the game is really not there. One point in Illuminate, uh, like Keeper of the Light wants to put a point in Spirit Form, more points in Chakra Magic, Bloodseeker is just Rupture. Oracle doesn't provide you with much unless you, like, manages to get a couple of purif Purifying Flames. So, again, it needs to be Nisha. He's the one that did manage to get some rotation going, sitting at 2-0 score at the moment, going into Echo Saber build, something that we've seen Void Spirits do, now that the hero is universal, so getting that extra damage, like 15 minutes into the game, you have 200 damage. Last damage. off. Damage going in. They've got a stack here as well. They'll get the kill on Azai. And Nisha comes in trying to re at least get a return kill. Will find himself Yamich. Now the focus is on Armel. And the body blocks are pretty perfect, but he's got that swashbuckle to get some distance anyway. Still trying to run. Oh, he's crash. stuck. Get out of the low ground. And now they've got the Infest, so Armel will walk away from these heroes on Liquid. No real stuns on Liquid, so heroes are going to be able to run away from them. Still, stacks are being made in the triangle. These Ancients are relatively low. Let's see if someone decides to clear it immediately or if they want to leave it for Medusa later on. Also, the reason why they picked Oracle, we didn't mention it, is like survivability. Fortunes end really good against Pagna's like save that he wants to use the Cryptify. Great against Techie's damage. And also, Radiance having an ability to remove Shield Crash from Pango is really good because they... Then he feels like a normal hero, not as tanky. Trying to rip through the tankiness as best they can. And you can see Zai starting to be the one who takes these stacks. Not an easy task for Zai. One point in Bloodrite. Bought casual medallion to look like you're doing something for the team. Love this kind of a build. I do <laughs> as well. It's like, oh, guys, I'll use medallion. That's my contribution to the team fight. And then going for that recovery. Midas. Is so, uh, what is it known as? Fake porting? The fake supporting? You just made that up, didn't you? Uh, yeah, it was one of those <laughs> funnier in your head than funnier said. Because I never heard it before. <laughs> Alright. Midas needs another good, like, seven, eight hundred gold to finish it off. Game did slow down, which Team Liquid is definitely fine with it. Didn't get hit by that Aether Remnant, and he is still very tanky. He's got four in the Kraken Shell, four in the Anchor Smash, and has a mech ready to go, and two Lotus, uh, healing Lotuses. Good luck trying to kill Boom. Definitely not gonna die, unless they focus him with Rupture, and just throw everything on top of him. I don't think this hero is dying. I, I feel like Boom should be relatively safe for another 10, 15 minutes even. I was looking at the Healing Lotus uh, active ability, Eat Lotus. <laughs> Very cool description. I know you're going to mention second chakra. It's really up there with it. Uh, it. No, it's definitely up there with it. But I'm realizing everything that has like healing properties is uh, vegetarian, right? Cheese, tangos, lotus petals. You know? You're right. Never thought about it. No carnivores in this uh, this world. They need to. They need to have like Roche die once or twice with bottom. Going, killing, getting the kill on his eye. Chrysalis. Getting that kill. They use Rolling Thunder. They've got four heroes here, and this is something you were saying you were wishing Secret would do in game number one, right? Have a little bit more aggression. Exactly. They pick up the Fusal Blade on Pango, immediately smoke up, get stuff. Done. They kill Bloodseeker one more time, and now Armel finds some of their stacks. You should also get golden experience if you stack that enemy kills it. Just kidding. <laughs> I wish you that I, way. As a support, I agree. Main support player. And if anybody takes it, I want the, the experience. But the whole time it's leaving Medusa to do whatever and almost has that Manta. 
14 minutes into the game. That'll be a wisdom rune that is about to spawn, like we were talking about in game number one. All those timers that you need to figure out, understand. Also, Medusa's holding Spark of Courage. I think this item has been overbuffed. It was kind of in a bad state, I would say. Nisha holding that thought. Oh, sure. Boom. But there's the Pugna to keep him healthy. Laughs in Tide Hunter. Definitely not going to die there. Even moves during the rupture. But to go back to Spark of Courage, really good on Medusa. 18 damage on a hero that is always going to be above 50% HP, which means that you always have damage. And then when you drop down, Denied. you're most likely dead if you drop down below 50 or 400 HP. But still, good farming tool for Medusa. Well, who is this, like, neutral for? Is there specific heroes that it just feels S plus tier on? Well, armor's always good. Like, it, it feels like budget Guardian Greaves when you drop down. You don't get the region, but you get some kind of an extra armor. It's a good farming tool for pretty much every carry out there. He's one of those items that might be even good for, like, a Huskar if you ha were, were drafting that. Then you would get Start armor. The damage, then you get the armor. Most of the time you would have armor, considering you have attack speed, I think you would prefer something else, something that gives you damage. But also good neutral item on Pango. Finds, I mean, I don't know if you can say find, you also need to be blessed by Gabian in terms of how the neutral items work. Zai again. Die. Yeah, blast off, they've got the mine down, Zai's gonna die. As another trio of heroes from Secret come forward onto uh, Liquid, Liquid, and it, it just, the, the aggression that we wanted to be there so badly for Secret is there, and I think that they've really figured out the game plan on this one so far. The question is, is it going to be worth it at the end of the day when Medusa's, you know, holding the high ground with a, a good amount of farm? Oh. Kind of expected with the draft that they have. They can't really gank. Maybe they can make a rotation with Void Spirit, but that's about it. So for now, they are just farming. You can see Tidehunter not using a Ravage a single time. Tells you a lot about the state of the game at the moment. And Crystalis... Getting closer and closer to his second item after finishing Armlet. Going into Deso, Havens Halberd. The build that we did mention, kind of a standard Lifestealer build, I would say. Unless you're playing into like certain matchups against illusion-based carries. So you might want to get Radiance, might want to get Mjolnir as well. We'll say though, you did call it. I'll give you the credit. You did say Deso. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I gotta uh, boost. It. I'm boosting you up. I, I thank you. Appreciate it. Also, a little bit more tankiness coming out from Pugna. Seeds of Serenity, Pavis as well. So, it's also dispellable, Pavis, by Oracle. He can't be anywhere on the map. This is level one Fortune's End we're talking about. But still, can be dispelled. A lot of these tankiness can be taken away with a single ability from Liquid. He's got his own Pavis as well in the Oracle. Nice support item. I think the buildup's quite nice. Having that Void Stone, that extra mana regen, the extra health. It feels good when you're supporting. It's, every item is going to be good if recipe is very cheap. So this is yeah. 275 item we're talking about. Recipe, the buildup's real nice. Ring of Protection, Fluffy Hat, exactly what the supports need. A little bit of armor a little bit more tankiness and some mana region boxy let's see if our man commits yeah he wants to get oh, this juking belt. around the tree into boom <laughs> he was he was juking out the pango real well but unfortunately for him there's also a tide hunter there he did a good job initially too he's got a four staff so he got up out of the high ground used that solar mind uh you know just trying to get out where he can We'll see, as he's going to be back up in 10 seconds. Ooh, this is also... Free for secret. Speaking of neutral items, Gossamer Cape. This four-second cooldown ability on it. Ooh. Love the description on the item. 7.33. New item. Very nice. Was wondering what it was. <laughs> and what did you get out of it? It's a newly added item into the Dota 2 video game. Oh, okay. Very uh, up there in description. This is the item that you want to keep also maybe even after finding some tier 2 neutral items because you're playing into Lifestealer. We'll see what he finds, but it's such a good item. Four second cooldown. 
Oh no, Zai again, but does have TP available. Oh, not doesn't gonna matter. get it this time. Yeah, he he's died a couple times. He's 5 and one. Like they've really silenced him, and it's a complete 180 on what happened in, in game one. And I know I'm referencing it a lot, but it's a small sample size that we have in this season so far. And, and Zai had an amazing game on that Magnus, and it's a completely different one as Finding Light pushing Yamich back, who is trying to get out with that blast off. And he's being healed up by Puppy. Boom comes over. They got the Rolling Thunder. There's the Ravage being used. It'll hit both supports as Insania still trying to survive. Does have that ult if he wants to use it, but eventually falls there to Armel. Well, now they're looking over and getting the kill on a boxy, and Nisha trying to TP out. He's successful in doing so, while three heroes chased him as well. Both teams have very limited amount of stuns that they can throw, so TP might be the best item in the game. We use first Ravage. Team Secret's very tanky. They have multiple ways of saving people with this mech, with pipe, Decrypify on Pugna, Pavis, Life Drain, naturally tanky heroes with the shield crash, Tidehunter as well. Kill to get. Immediately in the stone gaze, turning and trying to kill these heroes. I mean, Mickey confident enough to run forward by himself. Everybody here for the side of Secret. And now Rupture used, but on Lincoln. Well, there is a Lincoln. So now Zai is dead again. He's 0 6 and 1. Zai's done mentally after this one. Using Rupture, not seeing the Lincoln Sphere. It was mostly for protection. They definitely did not want to get the kill there because the rest of the team Liquid was not close to him. Mekke also needs to be careful. This time around, doesn't have Stone Gates available. Butterfly is completed. Mana dropping low. Yeah, and you're going to be left with 406 nice health if he's not able to survive. And there goes the mana. So can they get this Medusa out of here? Not looking likely as they get the Kono Insania as well. That is the first kill onto this Medusa. And a lot of pressure coming in from Secret. 14 to 3. And that's as the Tormentor spawns for Team Liquid. So this is what you talked about. Grabbing the enemy Tormentor and then going and getting your own. I'm not sure how they're going to be able to kill Armel, who picked it up. Uh, Nisha actually manages to steal Wisdom Rune from Armel. Let's see if he can get out of the trouble. There is no Rolling Thunder, but there's also fight happening on the other side. Uh, he's back out of the base. Deuce is still dead for another 10 seconds, needing, uh, needing some more time to farm. Going to the Crystalis next. Big difference though right now is like, yeah, Mickey's got the farm, but who who else has anything? Misha, he's okay, but Zai really doesn't have much gold at all. Yeah, this he's turning into more of a like aura bot at the moment, just having that hand of Midas to get more auras pretty much. Solar Crest done, going into pipe next. Like the setup of secret. Uh, the they were word. trying to kill Roshan, but this is a. Big boy, big chunky boy we're talking They've about. They've got Blink Ravage. They're going to use it. Hits on four. And now the four staff away from Boxy. They're starting to get away from this team. They'll use the Gush. They're slowing down this Coddle. They've got some lockdown onto Insania. They'll throw down the Sticky Bond. There's the Blast Off. That's going to stun up the Medusa. They're turning it around with Mickey going the other way. They get the kill onto Insania. The Rupture's on a Crystalis. So he's standing still for the moment. They go for the TP out as Armel he is safe to leave. Now the tankiness of Boom. It's a big problem for them. They can't really chip through the, all that he's got oh, in tanky. terms of the survivability. And Puppy standing his ground, going to the life drain. He's still trying to survive. The blood rights down. They finally get at least a kill. But he buys back. They go into the stone gaze. Crystal is now focusing attention onto Zai. Should be able to get a kill into the blood seeker. He's dead for 43 seconds. He's not going to buy back yet. But there's another blast stuff coming in from Yamich. The stun on the Mickey. He's down to about half this mana as Yamich getting low. Oh my god. Onto the back end. And Crystalis. now the blinding light is not enough either either. Illuminate damage. They just cannot get away. Boxy's gonna drop. Mickey's gone and everybody's dying on Liquid. As soon as he loses mana on Medusa, he dies Insania. instantly. Puppy, he bought he back in the too. previous fight, but yeah, Insania looks very dead here as well. Does have False Promise available. We haven't really seen False Promise being used. Like, it's kind of a waste to use it anyway. But Armel, he's going ham on Pango. They don't have any kind of a counter for him. Sure, there is Rupture, but also in terms of abilities that they can throw at him to proc the Lincolns, there aren't many. Bloodseeker doesn't have anything, neither does Void Spirit. 
Keeper, Keeper of the Light, uh, he he needs uh, Mana Leak <laughs> to be able to proc <laughs> it. Or he needs, uh, you know, his Spirit Form, but uh, yeah, not, not an easy one. Also, it resets, so they need to find another target for Rupture this time around. Secret. Killing Roshan. There's also so much minus armor coming out from their heroes. Crystalis with Deso. And you see Armel holding Orb of Destruction, so that's minus 3 armor. Orb of Corrosion, Lucky Shot. Let me do the math real quick. 8, 11, and then you have 14 plus Deso. That's 20 armor. If they just use Swashbuckle, get the proc, and hit someone with Deso. No. Uh, that's not a lot of armor to have uh, after the minus 20. By the way, they also still have their other Tormentor. Like, they have their own Tormentor in which they could get another shard from. And that's just available for them. Whenever they want to get that. So, Tormentor to Roche to a winning team fight, potentially to another Tormentor. Feels like there's a big boost coming in for Secret and not a lot coming in for Liquid at the moment. Like you said, Zai's trying to recover with this Midas. He's going into the pipe. He's trying to become that Aurobi. But it's taking a lot of time. Looking at his neutral item, he really wants some extra gold. Yeah, he's got the holding the big boy Philly with hey. the Midas. That's the dream. For a support, normally. You're losing damage. Minus 30 damage. Hmm? Boom, he's infested. Blink Ravage. Oh, it hits it hits them both. Oh Zai ends up going down, and it was the dissimilate. I thought he missed it, but he pops out the edge of the ravage next level play from boom definitely calculated blinks in in front of the hero and ravages him on the max aoe insania again in trouble yamich oh miss Last this one missing and that taser is gonna go off now well, mickey gets the crystalis he's still trying to go into the silver edge he's he medusa trying to hold on what do you mean? What? You said Mickey oh. gets Crystalis. Uh. <laughs> no, it's a it's a good pickup. He he definitely needs Silver Edge to be able to break Tide Hunter to kill him. Same goes for Life Stealer, but it's mostly for Tide because Tide. I think I said it uh, at the 10 minute mark that this Tide Hunter is not gonna die for 10 15 minutes. Didn't die a single time, and now with Heaven's Halberd that it's gonna be completed. This item's gonna ruin Medusa completely. Foxy, can you get Foxy. out of the trouble? Uh, no. I don't think so. Puppy. Draining his life to the end. This isn't... It's a 7k lead, but it, it kind of feels like game one, right? Where, where Liquid had that. 8k, 9k, turning it into 16 very quickly. Like, the advantage feels like it's it's more secure than what we've thought of as uh, advantages in the past, right? Like, the 8k at times in other patches has felt very fragile. Yeah, definitely. I don't know, Liquid, it feels like they need two sets of items to fight against what Team Secret has at the moment. Because the items are piling up. Next on the menu for Lifestealer has Shard and AC queued up. So even more minus armor. Also going to be a sieging tool holding the Aegis for a minute and 40 seconds. They should be able to clear out this last second tier 2 tower in a mid lane. Might even threaten a high ground. Just get some damage see see what happens they don't necessarily need to commit we're, we were being shown the tormentor when you were talking about buying shard i i agree go get the go get the shard from the tormentor i, I feel like free is better than anything else Iron hunter also wants a shard there's going to be their... They still have their Tormentor. They could go steal the other Tormentor again. That's almost five shards right there. <laughs> the Armel. He's the one thinking about it. There is XP rune available. 28 minutes. We'll pick it up. Uh, bottling the Wisdom Room. Looks cool. Yeah, well, that's a cool little icon when you bottle the Wisdom Rune. So, 6k? It's it's starting to drag back towards a liquid. Is that something to worry about if you're secret? Like, do you have the ability to kind of take your foot off the gas a little bit? 
You're just still playing against Medusa. She's a mean late game hero. That Silver Edge is now completed. Enchanted Quiver. So the damage is going to be there. I don't know if they can like focus down Tidehunter, kill him from 100 to 0. That's a bit of a difficult task to ask, I would say. But with the break, maybe with like Rupture, Void Spirit, heavily committing. I believe that's a Nullifier completed on Void Spirit. It just needs to use the career. So after Mantis style, they will have like ability to remove the Shield Crash, the Crypify, Glimmer Capes, Pavis. It's not going to be... They're not going to be as tanky. Lincoln from Boom, Rupture, Aether Remnant. They've broken him with the Silver Edge. He's not as tanky as he maybe thinks. They go to the Ravage. That lands on three. Stone Gaze also used. The Disengage is there for Secret if they want it. May even go back in. They infested on a Boom, so he's got a good amount of health to remain in. And Zai now with the chase, but doesn't have Rupture to slow him out. Boom, blink in. There's the Infest popping. Tendrils of the Deep. They get the False Promise. It's going to be on a Zai. They kill off Buppy. Nisha's got at least a kill. And Mickey moving forward, but he's disarmed immediately. So not much damage coming in from the Medusa just yet. There's the Astro Step. Last Running off to get away. It. Yamage, though. The Dissimilate gets the kill onto this Techies. So, boom. Still standing there with Armel. They don't hit the Aether Remnants that are coming through. But they've hit him with the Nullifier. The they'll get break with a Silver Edge. And they'll get themselves another kill. The Tendrils of the Deep not able to save this Pangolier. And all of a sudden, Liquid with a very good fight. And a tower taken in the mid lane. Have made the game, in terms of net worth, dead even. This nullifier changes things a lot. We talked about the Cryptify, no Glimmer Capes, no Pavis, no Shield Crash. Uh, he's really going ham. Same goes for Mickey. I mean, I did mention that they could go for Tidehunter. Not the greatest idea. You can still that he's still way too tanky with the Cryptify, Glimmer, Infest. They cut him down to half HP, but that was about it. Even with Rupture, they still don't have enough. So Team Liquid, they change the strategy. They kill two supports, which I think that needs to be done. Take out this Pugna. Take out Techies, if possible, because Lifestealer can be kited. Like every single hero on their side has some kind of a kiting tool. Invisibility from Medusa. Then you have four staff, Glimmer Capes on both supports. Zai is the only one who can't really like kite, but also building into one. Looking at his item build, four staff from the offlane Bloodseeker. That's also a good way for him to proc Lincolns on Pango potentially, right. and then use Rupture. And you were talking about how they're able to kite Crystalis on the Life Stealer. He willingly put himself in the middle of the fight, right? So if you're able to kite him when he's putting himself right there for you, uh, that makes it a pretty dangerous game for you to play when he's infesting into the Tide Hunter and then jumping in to fight. Now that lead's no longer there, so a move like that is uh, maybe ill advised at this point. Nisha's gonna be super tanky. He's gonna be. I'd say almost impossible to kill. Has this shield rune, has resonant pulse, manta style to dodge things, greater healing lotus as well, level 20, so can get out of the trouble with astral step easier. Hopefully he's collecting uh, all those lotus petals to then get the cheese and combine it all together. Little recipe. Radiance top tower is under attack. The 21 to 7, not a lot of kills for Liquid, but enough to get the game right back. And also, he should now sitting top ahead of all the cores on secret. Not something that we were seeing for a long time in this game. Yeah, he's been farming. I mean, they did Radiance manage to kill him a few times, but Medusa is if left alone, and you can see now the power of this hero. Scotty now completed, going into Daedalus next. At least that's what's queued up on him, so wants to have more damage. Had it queued up for a second, then went to Scotty, now back to the Daedalus. Pulling Thunder into the pit. Boom, near the Twin Gate. The Silver Edge, finding Boom. Mine explodes, but they've got the break. Do they have the damage to get the kill here on a Boom? They'll throw down the Blood Rite to get a silence on him once again. The Sticky Bomb's gonna land on a Mickey. They're going for the damage as Nietzsche's onto the back lines. They've got the silence on a Puppy. They use that Stone Gaze, but they've disarmed the Medusa. Now the follow up with the Ravage. There's no follow up with Ravage, though. Down the Void Spirit on the back lines. The Tendril of the Deep, the Astral Step. He's getting some distance. Now goes back into the Dissimilate. He's just too hard to catch. The break again coming in from the Silver Edge, but Boom still surviving. Secret thinking about running, but Crystal is going in. He's going to rage, and despite his rage, he is still just in his own cage. They'll 
go for him. They'll try to get this kill on a crystal. It says now Nisha, he's not got a lot of mana to work with. Tendrils of the Deep again, but Chrysalis trying to survive. They've got the silence on him. The Astral Step once more. They'll take out Chrysalis. He's going to be dead for 70 seconds. Now they'll find their attention on a boom. These mines are booming, but they're not doing the damage. They get the kill on a puppy, and they don't quite get boom as he's able to TP out. Everybody was low mana in that fight. Like Keeper of the Light barely had mana to use Chakra Magic. He was thinking, do I need to use it on myself to actually have mana to use my abilities? Uh, manages to get Chakra on Void Spirit, and this is the tankiness on Void Spirit that we talked about, like Manta style. All of his abilities lowered the cooldown on it, so he's super tanky. Like Medusa's damage output in the previous fight, they start to focus her down, but she can stand her own ground. Almost 10... Yeah, I like to round up the numbers. Uh, 10,000 damage, you know? It's, round up. it's closer to 10,000 than to 5,000, okay? I mean, if that's almost 10,000 damage, he almost did 100,000 damage in that fight. <laughs> well, you're not wrong. So now they do have a cheese available on Void Spirit. Gonna be even more tanky. And one item that we didn't mention is having this evasion, Elven Tunic. The ability to choose your own items was something that has been discussed on Reddit. Reddit, very smart. I'm also part of the Reddit as well, have account there, which means that uh, some of these ideas, yeah, are really good. I, I like this change a lot because you're not completely blessed by RNG and you can also choose what's most beneficial for the situation. Like, oh, like, the, feels... like Dandelion Amulet on Zai. He's like, what do I need? A little bit more mana, a little bit more damage block. Sign me up. It does feel a little bit bad when the five choices don't feel that great, though. Now it's like losing the lottery five times straight up. There's usually at least one thing, right? One thing is like, okay. I don't think there's a situation you're like, unless you're a Philly enjoyer, then you're like, ah, oh, if I don't get it, I'm pretty mad about it. Yeah. It's the support's worst fear is not getting the Philly stone in the... Uh in the lottery. Vicky, by the way, he's 23, so he's he's getting towards that level 25. And it is gonna be a, a big upgrade, a big boost for him. Level 25 on a Medusa, really a big game changer as well. Having an ability to have a AOE Scotty. Nisha also thinking about getting Scotty for himself to have more damage, more stats on a universal hero means more damage. I don't know if he wants to commit to it, especially with level 25 talent on Medusa, but might just go for it. Reduce the healing from Life Stealer, from Tide, Pugna. Not too bad of a choice. These fights here in this weird part of the jungle are, are very interesting. There's a lot of places to try and juke around in these trees when it's happening in, like, the mega bottom lane because there's the bottom lane and then there's like this bottom jungle that's also kind of a lane yeah, even after playing i don't know like 200 plus games on this <laughs> patch it always catches me by the surprise like i know i'm somewhere and then i click and i'm like well i should have been there like 15 seconds ago and also seeing these outer rings being available it's like oh what part of the map is this <laughs> oh Where are you watching? ryan Set. Trying to get that kill. Almost catching Armel, but he's able to safely retreat. Break again on to Boom. Even with the break, he's not exactly dying so quickly. Still didn't die a single time in this game. As Defiant Shell has Kraken Shell. My man's collecting all the shells. Yeah, the Defiant Shell gets just stuck onto his back with the barnacles. Over time, it's just made a home for itself. So, boom. Still standing his ground, and they've got the disarmament of the Medusa. That's been a bit of an issue there for me. Just struggling to get damage out when he's disarmed. Solar Crest on top of him. Blood Rage as well. It's a lot of attack speed. BKB in his backpack, holding the Aegis for another minute. Another disarm. Lucky Shot plus. Heaven's Halberd. Hey, I don't know if they want to maybe get something like a Lotus Orb to remove Lucky Shot. I'm wondering if Seeger can kind of time this right. And another minute and seven seconds on this Aegis. The Racks are in some trouble. 
Bloom's still just kind of standing in front of them, hoping that maybe they stay long enough, but they haven't really delayed this Rax take, I think, long enough for them to even think about staying past their Aegis bedtime. Power of Pugnus Shard that he picked up from the first Tormentor, I believe. It's like you use Light Brain and you kill off Illusions immediately. So these Mantis styles not going to be as effective. Break on Tide, cuts down to 60-70% HP, still not enough. Nisha is the one who's split pushing, has double damage available. Went for Daedalus in the end, I like that choice way more compared to Scotty. Just raw damage, jump on top of a hero, delete it. Holding the Mind Breaker as well, which is now a tier 4 item. Still strong, still feels really, really good. The numbers got buffed. Zai needs to be careful. Zai? 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 <laughs> Oof, 60 <laughs> HP. <laughs> that was really close. I, I was I'll not expecting it on that. camera. I mean, he also can't believe it. <laughs> Garden now uh, picked up for the Oracle. So he's got the Reign of Destiny. The old Agadim Scepter. Numbers are also tweaked, but the good one. A little bit of damage, a little bit of heals as well. And some heal amplification. Extra 20% coming in handy. Let's say heal amplification. You pop a cheese. Nisha, he's hunting. Double damage available. Let's see the crits. Yep, from this. Going for Harpoon next. Radiant's bottom barracks are under attack. Five slotted for now. Has power treads available that he can sell. Build into something different. Finally, Mickey is about to finish off this first set of barracks. Whiff and gone. Okay. No ages this time. And they make the jump. I remember this matchup. Medusa against Tidehunter back when Snake was stealing mana. So you picked Medusa Nyx Assassin, protected your own Medusa with it, and then Tidehunter couldn't play Dota. Anyone couldn't play Dota. Like 50% of your max mana pool was gone. One mana burn. Literally zero. Let's see what Dota Plus thinks about it from... Okay, this this is just scripted. 75, 25, back to 25, 75. <laughs> <laughs> a nice little script. We'll see if it goes back the other way as Secret try to fight for a game three. It's getting close to 25 time for Mickey. And I like... Uh... I like what Insignia's got to do. Yeah, definitely gonna go for it. Overwhelming <laughs> Blink and three Divine Rapiers. The divine Rapiers. Maybe he's got him queued up hoping Mickey buys them and dies and then he can pick them up. Liquid has been controlling all, all the power runes. Every single time there is Void Spirit showing up his new rune, whether that's a shield, double damage, now keeping Arcane in the bottle. That harpoon. Hit the harpoon. Fishing. Harpoon is one of those items I would assume Kunkka would be big on, trying to kill Tidehunter. Maybe that's the only way to kill Tide, because right now he's sitting at zero deaths. Yeah, harpoon him into an Aether Remnant. Hit that control. They're starting to mine the base. That's uh, always the uh, last-ditch effort for a techies, right? Yeah. Medusa hits level 25. From the void. So, split shot uses modifiers. You will have Scotty available on multiple targets. BKB as well. Doesn't have much move speed. They use Solar Crest to try to buff her up a bit. Without Solar Crest, see the move speed. 302. Not the fastest. She can still be much, much bigger. Seeing what Mickey has in a quick buy. Aghanim Scepter, Blessing, Shard as well. Finished off Swift Blink, so that's going to be some extra movement speed. Try to position himself, Solar Crest on top. Blink, that's not going to be fun to go up against. Two minutes till Roche is back up. So we'll see if they can get that done and uh, if that needs to be done. The next two minutes. Which team will be getting in? Octarine Core being built here for the Pangolier. The game is kind of just kind of shut down, right? 
We're taking the the slow siege and hoping to get something done or maybe fight off that Aegis, but Liquid never gave him that opportunity to uh, yeah, team take it at the end of the Aegis. Team Secret definitely slowed down the way they played. First, like, 20, 25 minutes of the game, and then they were kind of struggling yep. Nisha. They kill him. Wait. It's a BKB. Here's the BKB. They've got Armel Lincoln's popped, and Zai trying to get in there with a rupture, unable to do so. And so Secret just kind of disengage and don't really take much casualty for it. There's the five-man smoke from Liquid, so they want to keep the, the pressure on. And if they go through the path that they just wrote on the map, they're going to find pretty much all of Secret. Considering how Liquid is playing, I would assume that they still didn't kill bottom barracks. Sending illusions, everyone's playing that part of the map. Roshan gonna be respawning in a minute, 44 minutes into the game, which means that it's gonna be on Dire's side. So one of the reasons why Team Secret is already migrating there, Puppy, might get caught here. They find him, they've got the silence, they see him, the Ogre Sealed Totem trying to get away. Puts the Pabbas on himself, but that is nowhere near enough to survive, so. Pavis, Glimmer Cape, Decrepify, just like immediately removed from this Nullifier. I see A on this being built on Pugna. I don't know if, like, it's very hard to take care of yourself in a situation like this, because it's going to get procced, Nullifier's on you, gets removed. I don't know if he should commit to it. Maybe, it's, like, I, I can't even think of a different eye. Like, you need... Aeon Disc Lincolns or something to be <laughs> to be able to survive this burst from Nisha, who just cracked level 25. Astral Step crit, so even more crits coming out from him. This level, he really refuses to get level 10 talent. He's like, I'm not getting this one. Instead, got all the stats instead. Doesn't need mana, doesn't need that eat remnant damage. I, I, I would, I would like the, the 1.5 mana regen, of course. By the way, Tormentor taken. Pangolier now has himself a shard. So, roll up. Ready to go. But this is all while the Reigns of Destiny are laid down onto Roche. And this is going to be Aegis Cheese and Refresher Shard. So, problems still piling up for Team Secret to deal with. Two cheeses on Liquid, too. And like you were talking about with the Reigns of Destiny, these are going to do much more. All the heal amplification, like you're sitting inside Reign of Destiny, Boxy pops that Illuminate heal as well. So, gonna be quite a lot. Where's that refresher? I can't seem to find it. Okay, there's one on Void Spirit. Rupture. Crystalis. They're trying to get a kill on the Crystalis. They'll start to chase. They've got, well, boom. Retreating as well. Nothing doing just yet. Put some damage on the Crystalis, and that was a bit of an issue for a second until you used that rage and TP'd out, but now infest on cooldown for another 35 seconds. For now, Mickey is the one collecting mines, figuring out where the mines are. Needs a little bit of more, but his mana replenished. Zai still holding the Philosopher's Stone. Swift blink in, Tendrils of the Deep, that hits on the Zai too. They have put Mickey low on mana, but are unable to get the kill. Hotel, give me mana. Needs to use like 15 chakra magics to be able to replenish all of Medusa's mana pool. Let's see. With Mystic Snake. That's gonna help out a little bit. There's a ton of mines in the secret base. Something that Techies is really good against. Trying to siege the high ground. But uh, Boxy, we didn't talk too much about Boxy. He's been pretty silent, farming on Keeper of the Light, managed to farm. Orchid, and also just straight up Hex with the Blink Dagger, so he can be the initiator for the team, follow up Void Spirit and his adventures. Is this Team Liquid or Tundra we're seeing play? Because <laughs> this is how Tundra plays, just chokes you out of the map completely. Yeah, they're still trying to find a way to escape trying to want, find a way to fight and boom links in but there's still two and a half minutes left on this Aegis like there's not a lot going on here in terms of 
answers for Secret at the moment. They can disarm the Medusa, they can slow down the Siege, but they can't exactly counter it. It's not turning the other way yet for Secret, and it's going to be very tough for them to do so with them turtling so heavily. I don't... Right. That's very, very tough, especially with Nisha also having recovered completely. He's six slotted, basically. Holding on to that bottle just to have that arcane rune to pop, and then we'll probably throw a harpoon in there. Maybe even the refresher. Oh, he, he's got a lot working for him as well, and it, it was Nisha who wasn't exactly high on the gold charts to start this game, but... He's now still continually beating out all these heroes on secret. I restore my connection to the void. Zai so picks up Wisdom Rune, 2000 XP almost. There's uh, two Wisdom Runes available on their side of the map. It's a big chunk of XP. Oh, boom! He is completely isolated from the rest of his team and killed just so quickly. That's his first death of the game. Yeah. And it's at a good time if you're a Liquid fan. Now they're going to go to the back lines with this Rolling Thunder. Chrysalis trying to output some damage here. They go to the Ravage with BKBB BK, BK, pop by Chrysalis. They get the kill on a Boxy. They'll take out Insania. These supports are gone. The buyback comes in from the Coddle. But they just don't find the Medusa yet. Now no more mana. The right clicks are in. They'll take out the Aegis. They're starting to buy back. They've got Yamage back into the fight. He's going to TP over. And Mickey will respawn by Chrysalis. Trying oh, to get some help here connect. for Yamage. Blast off doesn't connect. They've got the Illuminate. Now they're going to pop the BK. Nisha ready to jump in. Onto the Medusa. Nisha's going to jump in onto this one. But he's got the Taser that disarms him as well. So Yamich, he'll fall. BKB's going to run out on Mickey. Oh, no. He's on the cliff. He's getting the oh, Artur no. treatment. Blinding light. Oh, God. Easy. And this is a big issue for him as he needs to TP away. The fight was going their way. They were starting to take out these heroes. They got the first life out of the Medusa, but now they need to start to retreat because, well, they don't have the life steward to do anything. They lose Armel. They lose Puppy. And all of a sudden, three heroes are dead on the side of Secret. <sighs> Tidehunter bought back, used Ravage. She's like, just exists there pretty much. Doesn't really provide them with much. They need to use the buybacks. 27k gold lead. This was the usage of the Aegis. Uh, they popped one cheese as well. Nisha, he's in. Yeah. Yeah, he's in. He's looking for Armel. But now Swashbuckle. The disarm again under the Medusa. They've got the Rolling Thunder that's going to bounce Nisha up into the air. Now, even when Mickey is disarmed, they've still got damage coming in from Nisha, and Boom might just die. They've got the Assimilate on him. They'll get the kill into Boom. Now they're going to look at the rest. The Blood Rite's going to be down, and that's not going to land on anybody as the Illuminate hits on a Crystalis. He's also got the Solar Bind on him. They'll pop the Rage. EKB's been popped by Nisha. They'll focus their attention on the Tier 3 over mid. These bombs aren't really doing anything here from this techies who's still dead for another 25 seconds they pretty much well, didn't defend anything with those mines yeah they've been collecting the mines fates edict medusa doesn't really care too much about it both towers okay. gone off immediately now yeah, let's see it's time to finish off this game no tight hunter for 70. infest rolling thunder and senior's gonna die he's got buyback and use it as that fight went on for so long they'll use the stone gaze they'll start to go the other way they've got their attention on nisha he'll pop that manta and try to get out so he had the illusions he's able to escape for a moment crystal is trying to fight mickey 1v1 he's actually doing a pretty good job he's got the light chain coming in from buffy the false promises there and now they're turning this one around crystal is trying to tp out they've got the reins of destiny so the heal is really going to help mickey out to survive in terms of hp but that hp is not exactly amazing mickey got no mana Mickey can TP back, and he can't be recalled back. Replenishes mana. Let's see if that happens first. They're going to recall Zai. Nisha, he's oh. in one more time. Nullifier. Yamich still alive. Crystalis, he's trying to stay on the forefront. They're hoping to get themselves the Tidehunter back, but the blast off into the Hex coming out from Boxy, and now Solarbind on him once again. The Blinding Light, they go to the Dissimulate. That's going to be under the back lines with Mickey. They've got the damage. They'll go to the Infest, but it's not going to be enough to save Yamish. Right clicks in on Anisha. He's going to pop that Manta once again. They've got the Disarm out of the Medusa. They've got the Life Drained off this Nether Ward. It's splitting a little bit. They've got the Aether Remnant to taunt up Crystalis, and then all fire on him. They'll get the kill, but he does have buyback. The Creeps are pushing in, and so are the heroes, and Liquid will take game two. They'll take the series 2-0, and they will take the...